A flying saucer from outer space abruptly lands on Earth to give humanity a very important message. A message about stopping its wars and learning to live in peace. It was a day that astonished the world. It was the day the Earth stood still. Released in 1951, The Day the Earth Stood Still was one of the first major motion science fiction pictures. A movie that would pave the way for the genre, where science fiction was now going to be a mainstream genre of cinema. A movie that would be considered a masterpiece of astonishment. A simple tale of an alien visitor called Klaatu and his indestructible robot Gort, whom have arrived on Earth due to not so simple times, where our visitors are instantly met with violence and resistance. The big question is, will the rest of the world listen to Klaatu's message of peace before it's too late? So today we are going to look into one of the most influential science fiction movies of all time by exploring 10 things that you didn't know about the day the Earth stood still. So as always, let's check it out. Number 10, based on a short story. The Day the Earth Stood Still is based on a short story called Farewell to the Master, which was written by American science fiction writer Harry Bates, and it was first published in the magazine Outstanding Science Fiction in October 1940. Farewell to the Master has the basic outline story of The Day the Earth Stood Still. Mine are a few slight changes here and there. One of the biggest is the powerful robot Gort, whom in the short story was originally called Nut, spelt G-N-U-T. Farewell to the Master was also something of a game changer in the world of science fiction, as thanks to H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, aliens were seen as sinister creatures who just want to conquer and destroy. Farewell to the Master introduced us to Klaatu, who wasn't an evil slimy being hell-bent on chaos and destruction, but the exact opposite. He was a presence of nobility, who actually cared and wanted to save the human race. So it was something of a novelty seeing an alien story where the alien was trying to save the world. Number 9. Real Life Issues Led to the Movie In the early 50s, the world was changing. World War II had just ended with the invention of the atomic bomb, and the Cold War was causing social and political tensions. It was a new, scary and unpredictable time. The time of the atomic age. An age where conflict and new powerful weapons can wipe out cities and possibly much more. Julian Blaustein was a producer for 20th Century Fox and he wanted to make the Farewell to the Master short story into a movie as he felt that it had themes that resonated with the current issues of the time like mankind's atomic discovery and the ideological conflicts. He thought with everything going on in the world, it was the right time for this science fiction story about a visitor from another planet arriving on Earth to warn of the dangers if humanity doesn't stop fighting and learn to live in peace and to stop creating powerful, devastating weapons. So The Day the Earth Stood Still isn't just your average B-1950 science fiction movie. It had an important message about armed conflict. Number 8. Original Title 20th Century Fox had greenlit the production of The Day the Earth Stood Still, and American scriptwriter Edmund North was hired to write a script based on the Farewell to the Master short story. North would actually go on to co-write the script for Patton with Francis Ford Coppola several years later in 1970. The Day the Earth Stood Still also got uncredited rewrites by Raymond Jones, who wrote short science fiction stories for magazines like Amazing Stories. The original title of the movie was Farewell to the Master, the same name the short story is based off. It then went under the title of Journey to the World, and The Day the World Stops was also considered, until it finally got the title The Day the Earth Stood Still, which is a better title, 
which carries more impact and more urgency with it. After all, if a spaceship randomly does land on Earth one day, I think the Earth probably would sit still for a while. There would probably be lots of WTF posts on Facebook and Twitter though, as well as people taking selfies with the ship and Gort. I mean, come on, we probably would though, and well, why not? Number 7. From Westerns to Space Age in the early 1950s, director Robert Wise was under contract for 20th Century Fox, and he had just directed a Civil War Western called Two Flags West. The movie was pretty successful, and after completing it, Wise was told that for his next movie, he should think about directing The Day the Earth Stood Still. So he went to the 20th Century Fox Studios and read the script and loved it, and said, quote, It was a marvellous way to tell a science fiction film, and liked so much what it had to say, end quote. He thought The Day the Earth Stood Still would be a great way to say, quote, Let's stop fooling around with this atomic bomb that we have invented, and let's be sane about the whole matter. Robert Wise was an amazing director, who equally had an amazing career, directing many movies such as West Side Story, The Haunting, The Sound of Music, The Andromeda Strain, and Star Trek The Motion Picture. He was also an editor on Citizen Kane and The Stupids. <laughs> Yes, Citizen Kane and the Stupids. Wow, I am both impressed and horrified at the same time. Sadly, Wise passed away in 2005, leaving behind a great cinematic legacy. Number 6. The Military Didn't Like the Script The Day the Earth Stood Still was mainly filmed on sound stages at the 20th Century Fox Studios in California. Additional on-location filming took place at Washington, D.C. The scene at the start of the movie where the spaceship lands and shows the military confronting it consisted of soldiers with guns and tanks. However, there was one major issue when filming that scene, that being the American Department of Defense refused to get involved in the day the Earth stood still, as they read the script and really didn't like it, and weren't going to take part in it. However, the guns and tanks and other tech seen in that film were from the 3rd Armoured Cavalry at Fort Meade. So I guess the army installation was more okay with the movie than the army itself was. And despite many of the establishing shots of Washington DC, none of the main cast actually went to Washington DC to do any filming. Number 5. Casting Possibilities There are many memorable stars who turn up in the day the Earth stood still, delivering memorable performances. When it came to casting the lead of Klaatu, the strange visitor from space, two big actors at the time were considered for the part, these being Spencer Tracy, who a few years earlier starred in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and Claude Rains, who was a huge go-to actor when it came to fantastical movies after he had starred as the Invisible Man in 1933. However, the part of Klaatu went to British actor Michael Rennie, who mastered the role of this peaceful but strange space visitor. After leaving a place in audiences' hearts, thanks to his portrayal of Klaatu, he would go on to star in a 1952 theatrical adaptation of Les Miserables, and a 1953 movie about Titanic, also called Titanic. Sadly, Rennie passed away in 1971. American actress Patricia Neal starred as Helen Benson, the human who tries to help Klaatu. She had a real aura of classical Hollywood beauty about her. She would go on to star in Breakfast at Tiffany's, and sadly she passed away in 2010. Sam Jaffe starred as the professor. A few years later he also starred in Ben-Hur, but I'll always remember him as that creepy bookstore guy from Bedknobs and Broomsticks. He also passed away in 1984. Sadly, many of the cast and crew involved in the movie have passed away, but their performances that they gave on screen will last forever. Number 4. You Don't Hurt the Gort So I've mentioned all the faces seen in The Day the Earth Stood Still, but what about Gort, the terrifying and indestructible robot who accompanies Klaatu? whom also has many powers and abilities beyond our understanding. Well, the part was played by Locke Martin, who was an usher at the Grauman's Chinese Theatre. 
Locke had gigantism and stood at seven feet tall. However, wearing his gaunt costume was something of a nightmare for the actor. In order to get the metallic look, he had to wear two foamed rubber suits, which were laced up at the front and the back. And being in the costume was exhausting, as the suit would make him feel very hot with increased temperatures. And it also made him feel like he was stuck in a confined space. So wearing that suit was truly a horrible task. In fact, Locke would get so weak from wearing the suit, director Robert Wise insisted on frequent half an hour breaks, just so Locke could have a break from that costume. In addition to that, despite the fact that the Gort robot is supposed to look very strong on screen, that wasn't the case behind the cameras. As for the scene where Gort lifts up the Helen character, you can see wires were used to hold her up, probably due to Locke feeling weakened by his suit. However, Locke was considered by all to be a very nice, caring guy, where he got the nickname The Gentle Giant. And sadly, he passed away just a few years later in 1959. But his performance of Gort has gone on to be considered one of the most memorable and influential robots in movie history. I would say that Gort is right up there with the likes of the Metropolis robot, R2-D2 and C-3PO, as well as Robocop and The Terminator. Number three, changes had to be made for the MPAA. So yeah, the MPAA did have a few issues with the day the Earth stood still, and it wasn't for the scenes of violence and characters getting shot, but rather the scene where Klaatu is resurrected and brought back to life, and the fact that the character seemed to have unlimited power. This made the MPAA a little nervous, probably due to religious reasons. So instead, dialogue was added to the script that suggests that Klaatu's resurrection is only temporary, with Klaatu saying, that power is reserved for the almighty spirit. So thankfully, because of these slight changes and adjustments made to the script, the MPAA felt more comfortable about the resurrection subplot. Also, it'll be an injustice to talk about the day the Earth stood still and not to mention the Bernard Herrmann score. Herrmann would go on to be a frequent collaborator with Alfred Hitchcock, with him scoring Vertigo and Psycho, as well as Citizen Kane, the Twilight Zone series and Taxi Driver. His score for The Day the Earth Stood Still is truly out of this world and alien-like. It has that usual weird alien humming music that science fiction movies from the 50s are known for. Well, it started here. Herman invented that old school alien science fiction sound. So to him, he wasn't making another alien sounding score that everyone was familiar with, but was genuinely pioneering new sounds. That itself makes this one of the most important movie scores ever. Number two, the Keanu Reeves remake. So yeah, there was a Day the Earth Stood Still remake, which came out in 2008, which starred Keanu Reeves as Klaatu, as well as Jennifer Connelly as Helen Benson and John Cleese as The Professor. And seeing Basil Fawlty and John Wick working together definitely is a sight to behold. The remake heavily follows the script from the 1951 version. So much so, Edmund North, who wrote the 1951 script, got a credit for the 2008 remake. The Day the Earth Stood Still did financially well in the box office, but sadly it was considered a dud by both fans and critics. It was even nominated for a Razzie for Worst Remake Slash Sequel, but it lost to Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. One issue I have with the film is Keanu Reeves. Now, I want to make it clear, okay? I freaking love Keanu Reeves. I think he's a great actor and a genuinely nice guy in real life. But to me, he's just really boring as Klaatu. He has no personality and speaks the entire movie with this dull, monotone voice. And it genuinely feels that Reeves is on sleeper mode. I don't know if he was generally bored while making the movie, or if this is just what Reeves thinks that aliens would behave like, but it just doesn't work, in my opinion. Some people might think he was great, and that is fine. I also thought that the CGI effects looked pretty bad too. They looked way too animated and cartoony. In conclusion, I feel like the remake has pretty much gone on to become a forgotten movie. I mean, I never hear anyone talk about it or even mention it nowadays. I don't think it was an awful movie by any means, but to me, it just wasn't as good as the original and kind of 
dull and forgettable. But once again, I just want to add that I do love Keanu Reeves, just not in this film. Number 1. Science fiction was never going to be the same again. Interestingly, The Day the Earth Stood Still wasn't an instant classic like it's considered now, but when it was released, it was considered more of a moderate success. Its box office earnings were okay, just not spectacular, with it becoming the 52nd highest grossing movie of 1951. However, The Day the Earth Stood Still did get tons of praise, specifically for its fun science fiction elements, along with its positive messages of putting an end to global conflict. In time, The Day the Earth Stood Still increasingly became a much-loved and treasured movie, a classic and a milestone in the sci-fi genre. In 1995, The Day the Earth Stood Still was preserved by the National Film Registry for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. I think The Day the Earth Stood Still also sparks interesting discussions on how peace can be achieved. Klaatu's way was to tell the Earth to stop fighting and making weapons, or there will be intergalactic consequences. Now some may not agree with this approach, and feel that it takes away free will, and that this is achieving peace by threats. Others may agree that it's for the greater good, and that Klaatu's demands are justified to preserve innocent life. There are so many ways it can be interpreted, and as of yet there is no definitive answer. Regardless, The Day the Earth Stood Still left a massive footprint in cinema. In its wake, it started the arrival of more science fiction movies that went beyond the boundaries of imagination. And from there, the science fiction genre had taken off. And ever since then, science fiction movies had been built up from strength to strength, where it's now the genre that we all know and love. And it all started that one time a flying saucer landed in Washington, D.C. It was a day that shocked us, and intrigued us, but more importantly, it was the day that the Earth stood still. This film is a classic with a very powerful message. The movie might have aged, but what it has to say is timeless. Fans of more modern movies who like action and loud shooty 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 pow 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 may find the slower pace and heavy dialogue of the day the earth stood still to be boring. But all fans of cinema should definitely watch it. Anyway, I'm Minty. And the day the earth stood still tried to tell us a message. A message to stop fighting each other. Sadly, we didn't listen. Yet. See ya!